So I, I want to touch on just some of the economic conditions that are ongoing in Will County in a general sense, but also um, just take the time to focus on a couple of particular things that, frankly, are really unusual still as, as we move forward from uh, well, the COVID recession, uh, specifically employment in the labor force and kind of what's going on there, and a little bit about housing and real estate, which frankly is just mind-shatteringly challenging right now. So we'll, we'll talk about that, but just sort of a tail of the tape here. Again, from a population standpoint, we're holding our own. Uh, a little bit of growth here is good, but even that modest growth has been the third best in the state of Illinois since the last census. Uh, Will County performs well. We perform well on housing, and, and we'll talk more about that. Our gross regional product, like the national gross regional product, was down a bit in 2020, and it's down roughly commensurate with where the national GDP was. So we do expect a pretty significant bounce back in that. And considering where we thought we would be at the beginning of COVID, this is actually an okay number in, in my estimation. Um, unemployment is pulling back to what I would call more normalized levels. Um, obviously, we, we got up in the mid-teens in April 2020 and had a sustained and prolonged period of elevated unemployment. It's still elevated, but, but certainly not to the extent we might have expected at this point. Our median household income in Will County continues to rise at a pretty good clip, uh, past 90,000 in the most recent data, fifth highest in Illinois, and significantly outpaces the state and the nation. Uh, the, the U.S. is at about 65,000, and the state of Illinois is a little bit above that, but still under 70,000. Will County uh, residents still continue to do quite well for themselves, um, which is great news. Um, the number of businesses, this is fascinating to me, actually rose a bit in 2020. Uh, so looking at Q4 2020 versus Q4 2019, we're, we're up a little more than 1% in the number of total businesses. And what's interesting about this is I, I don't think anybody expected that or, or um, could have anticipated that change. I think it speaks a lot to the support programs that, that were put together, both at the national and, frankly, at the state and local levels as well. Uh, we saw our communities, and Julie alluded to the WEN group, um, our communities and our community leadership and economic developers were, were clever and supportive and really found ways to keep businesses going uh, through the last year and very much appreciated. And then um, housing. So housing building permits were up 11% year over year. We're, we're going to talk more about housing later, but housing is really in an extraordinary place for Will County. Uh, first, though, I want to talk a little bit just about employment and labor force and what's going on here. And um, maybe one little thing you didn't know or haven't thought about in a while, but I, I do want to call out. We look at the last 10 years, Will County remained number one in Illinois for job creation. Even following the effects of COVID, even following the little pullback that we saw, Will County continues to outperform the state and the region in terms of job creation. And it's a position we're very proud of. I mean, this leadership spot has been Will County's for some time. Uh, we, we continue to really drive job growth in the state of Illinois. That said, on a national level, job growth has been challenged. So post-COVID, we've definitely seen a comeback overall. But nationally, we're down more than 7 million jobs as compared to where we were post-COVID. In Will County, that number is much, much more modest. We're down maybe a couple thousand jobs versus where we were immediately uh, pre-COVID. Uh, so we're, we're definitely performing a bit better. But this trend is really extraordinary in terms of what we're seeing. But bear in mind, this jobs number means people who are at companies and actively employed, right? There's another side to this, and that is job openings. It's not as though companies aren't attempting to hire. For those of you that follow the job openings data, um, which, you, you know, I don't know who does, but for those of you that do, <laughs> you probably already know um, more than 9 million job openings uh, in the most recent data nationally. It, to give you some context for this, I mean, th this is extraordinary. We've never seen anything like this. And a month ago, we were looking at 8 million job openings, like, and that was new ground. So we, we've definitely seen a huge increase in companies attempting to hire people. That, that's a big deal. Um, and even now, as we have elevated unemployment numbers, we're only looking at 1.1 unemployed persons per job opening. This is historic. When this was happening prior to the recession, we were just astonished at this one-to-one -one ratio. 
So we really are seeing an emphasis on hiring, and it's broad-based. So these are national job openings over the course of the last, uh, or I'm sorry, in April, the, the most recent data. You can see transportation's out front. Uh, the bounce back in leisure and hospitality is a big deal. There are a lot of job openings there. Uh, but what we're seeing is there's a broad base of job openings, um, and companies are trying to hire. And, you know, it's not just posting the jobs. Wages are up a bunch as well. So in Will County, as we look at wage structure, just Q4 2020 over Q4 2019, it's up 13%. That's a huge jump in one year. And I think more importantly, from our perspective, we're seeing much stronger wage growth at the lower end of the wage scale. So it roughly doubled the wage growth in jobs in the less than $20 an hour range, as opposed to those um, in the higher wage ranges. So we're seeing great wage growth. We're seeing it where it should be, and frankly, long overdue in terms of where it is on the pay scale. Uh, but this, this wage pressure isn't necessarily leading people back into the labor force. And that's what we continue to struggle with. So as we look at Will County's labor force, in other words, the number of people who have looked for a job in the last uh, either currently working or look for a job in the last four weeks, how we measure this. Our labor force is down pretty significantly, about 15,000 people from two years ago. It undulates over time, but, but this, this pullback is extraordinary. Nationally, we've seen more than 2 million people fewer in the labor force uh, than there were uh, prior to the pandemic. And, and so as we look at this, there's this disconnect, right, of, you know, where there's a lot of jobs out there, but people aren't working, you know, what's happening. And the reality is there, there remains some hesitance to go back into the workforce. You know, I'd be remiss, we, we hear a lot of narrative, we hear a lot of narrative uh, from the chambers and from business organizations that the additional un unemployment dollars from the federal level are, are slowing people re-entering the workforce. I'm not sure that we have a lot of data to necessarily support that argument. Um, what we're hearing, I mean, certainly it's part of the picture, but what we're hearing at the local level, and I want to give credit to our Workforce Investment Board, Caroline Portlock and her team, uh, that have really done some, some deep dive on this and, and tried to figure out you know, what's going on. You know, here in Will County at the end of May, we have more than 21,000 uh, unique job postings out there. I mean, it's, it's not like it's just a national thing. It's happening here at home, too. There are a lot of job openings. Uh, when they survey people and ask why they're not coming back to the workforce yet, uh, one of the big things that we continue to hear is childcare. Childcare is a, is a big, big factor. And even with school being out and us being into the summer, summer camp enrollment is exploding, but, but it's capped. People are short staffed in that space. So it creates, unfortunately, a bit of a cycle in terms of how people can go back to work. We're also hearing, you know, certainly paying compensation, but flexibility. I, I think if COVID has taught the workforce anything, it's the value of flexibility in, in their work in terms of time, hours, you know, whatever they can do, sort of make it work in their current life. Um, we also continue to hear a little bit of a hesitance to go back to work due to the virus. Um, so so there is, there's a broad mix of things. And I'm very enthusiastic. I'll close this by saying this. I do believe that as we get back into school and get back into what I would call normalized scheduling, uh, we will see people re-enter the labor force. Uh, but it, it's certainly something that continues to put a lot of pressure on our industry. We hear this every day. John, Julie, and I probably get a phone call every day asking about labor force. And, and it's, it's a big deal for, for our outlook for the future. But of course, you know, it's not just the people here, right? We want to attract more folks. To Will County to take all of these jobs we're creating. And I think, you know, as we look at our housing picture, that's important. Um, another bit of good news, I'll start with housing. As some of you may have heard me say this before. Illinois, or Will County's number one in Illinois, again, in single family housing construction. And that gap actually grew year over year. So this is 2020 single family building permits in Illinois. Will County's doing a great job in this space. In fact, for the last two years, one in seven single family homes that were built anywhere in Illinois were built in Will County. That's a big deal. People want to live here. And it's something that you know, we continue to perform well in that space. But even with the building being up, it's not enough. You know, we, we see sales are up year over year. That's great news. Um, certainly happy to see that. But we're seeing extraordinary market constraints right now in the housing space. 
Um, I, I know there were a couple people on this in the real estate space, and uh, you, you definitely um, you know this story. But Will County's housing inventory, this is just a look at the last couple of years in our housing inventory. We are 76% below our 10-year average in housing inventory, and we're down almost 70% just year over year. It, it's extraordinary. And of course, constrained inventory leads to limited time on the market, right? Um, this stat kills me. Um, in April 2021, the median time for a house on the market in Will County, five days. I'm making five jokes. Five days. Um, and so we hear this story nationally. We hear it regionally. It, you know, but it's more acute in Will County. The national average is 19 days. Will County, five days in April. Um, you know, a, a stunning number, a stunning share of houses are off the market within two weeks' time in Will County. I mean, we're, we're really we're finding ourselves in a place where there just isn't enough inventory to meet the incredible demand in the county. And of course, when you've got not enough supply and an awful lot of demand, huge pricing pressure. And we're seeing that. So in just one year, uh, the median sale price of a home in Will County is up almost 15%. But, you know, when we look at that, we have to be a bit cautious. Well, maybe just the bigger homes are selling COVID. People need more space. No. The price per square foot is also up 14%, which means it's across the spectrum of housing. We're, we're seeing this extraordinary shift in, in terms of, um, you know, pricing and availability. And it's, it's an incredible mix. And what I would say here as we look at this is you've heard me advocate for this before. I will advocate for it as long as anybody will listen. We need more housing, more housing of all kinds. Um, if we want to attract the workforce of the future, if we want to attract younger people, if we want to keep our retirees here in Will County, we, we need a broad mix of housing product and we need more. Um, you know, I've read articles this week, lumber prices are falling, hoarders are starting to sell. Super. Let's build some more housing. So it, it's certainly something that, that we're excited about. And um, I mean, it, it's hard not to be enthusiastic that people want to join us here in Will County. With that, you know, an awful lot of housing needs to get built. Some other real estate asset classes, I'm a little less sure. And I, I just want to touch on these briefly. Um, we've heard a lot of conversation about office space and what happens post-COVID. Is there going to be a move to the suburbs? You know, how are people going to manage office in the future? The truth is, we're not so sure yet. What I can say with absolute certainty is offices in the downtown space continue to struggle. So this is a look at office vacancies in, in the Chicago market. So it's just specific to Chicago because, frankly, they're our largest and most active office market. In just the last two years, they've added 8 million square feet of vacant space. That's not a great sign. And as people come back to the work, we, we certainly hear a shift. I've heard a lot of arguments that, well, people might need more space and it might balance out. It, I'm not so sure yet. You know, what we haven't seen is this push to build gleaming office parks in the suburbs. And I'm, I'm not so confident that that's going to happen. But certainly, we are keeping an eye out for targeted development, smaller spaces, co-working spaces, co-located spaces with other industries. We want to capture this opportunity if office wants to move to the suburbs. But we're definitely still in a position where the, the market's uncertain. That said, in Will County, the office space situation has been really steady. Uh, so this is a look at our vacant space over the, over the same period. Do we have some vacancy? Yes, um, but it's been really modest. And our vacancy rate is largely unchanged over the course of sort of this, this COVID period. So steady in the suburbs, and this is true throughout the suburbs, largely steady in the office space. Uh, but the urban centers continue to struggle. And so we look for opportunities there. But the, the truth is, it's awfully difficult to forecast where that goes today. Uh, that said, similar scenario in retail. We're seeing more steadiness in that asset class than I think we would have thought. I don't want to spend too, too much time on the retail assets. I mean, in Will County's market, we had a big pickup with the Costco project in Plainfield in terms of new retail square footage. But overall, it's, it's been a pretty steady market. So this is a look at Will County retail vacancy and Chicago retail vacancy in red over the course of the last few years. Pretty flat, pretty steady. And, and I think, again, at the beginning of COVID, we might not have anticipated this. 
but so far pretty steady and, and we're certainly happy to see that. Now, the big threat to retail is, was, has been this shift to e-commerce. And I do want to just give a quick comment on that as well. When COVID first hit, we saw a huge jump, huge jump in the share of, of total sales that go to e-commerce. You can see over time, I went with a longer trend line here just to give you sort of this impression of how sort of slow and steady this march has been from bricks and mortar retail toward e-commerce. As share of market, you know, immediately prior to COVID, we were looking at numbers in the you know, 11% range. And immediately, almost overnight, e-commerce captured a much larger share of total sales. Not surprising, right? People were concerned about going out of their homes. One of the things I talked about at our year-end event was, hey, how much of this sticks, right? How much of these behavioral changes stick around? And what we're finding is, I think less than I certainly thought, and maybe a lot of people thought, we're seeing this march back to trend. And, and so in the last couple of months, e-commerce has fallen, again, not back to where it was, not all the way back to the trend line, but it's pretty close, right? So we may see some lasting behavioral shift, but not quite as much as we thought. That said, e-commerce continues to just crush bricks and mortar sales in terms, in terms of growth. In just the last year, e-commerce sales are up 30% versus 3.6% for all sales. That e-commerce growth number in the high 20s percent year over year has been very consistent. 3.6% for all, for all sales is actually quite modest or quite big. We, we've seen bricks and mortar retail uh, overall growth would be closer to flat, less 1%. So e-commerce is going to continue to grasp more of the market share. There's, there's no doubt that that's the case, but it might not be as abrupt and lasting as we originally anticipated. And, you know, e-commerce, as, as we look at this, drives the last asset class I'll talk about, which is, of course, industrial. As e-commerce grows, we, we need to continue to add industrial space near population centers. And we've definitely seen that manifest itself in, in terms of um, you know, industrial, specifically within Will County. Our vacancy rates continue to fall. This is one of the lowest vacancy rates on record that we have right now. Our industrial market is, is large, it's complex, and, and it's really seen a lot of space get taken up. Over the last five years, more than 100 million square feet of space has been leased in Mill County. And if you look at the whole Northeast uh, Illinois region, so the five counties of Northeast Illinois, Will County's been more than half of, of all of the industrial demand for the entire region over the last several years. Um, so it, it continues to grow, it continues to expand, and really is largely a function of, of a lot of this e-commerce growth and, and need to be near the population centers. And, and with that, I'll close on just a little bit of project activity. And as I talk industrial, uh, again, you know, as we look at some of our largest transactions in Will County, just over the last couple of quarters, really reporting since our last event, we, we see that this emphasis, you know, Wayfair, Walmart, Amazon, Amazon on e-commerce type plays. And, and so that's an area where we continue to see things grow, but certainly not the only area. You, you know, for, for those of you that talk to me with some regularity, you, you've probably heard me say, or if you talk to your community economic developers, this has been the busiest spring I can remember in you know, 12 years in and around this industry. Um, Illinois has generated a lot of interest from a huge variety of different industry sectors, and we're certainly excited to see this. This is just a snippet uh, of um, industry sectors that we've worked with over the course of the last 12 months, and uh, certainly we, we've got a lot of projects continuing to roll in. They're exciting. It's great. And frankly, not just domestic growth. Uh, we've seen a, a tremendous additional emphasis in foreign direct investment in the United States and in Illinois in particular. Uh, just last week, uh, we, we did the Select USA Summit. Again, first time virtual, actually worked pretty well. Um, the largest um, year we've ever had for this program in terms of participants, companies from more than 80 international markets. Now, it was just some of the meetings that we took in the last week. This is in the last seven days. Uh, companies from, from different countries, a lot of different industries, and a lot of interest in Illinois. Illinois continues to be a strong draw in a magnet. Um, I've got to give a lot of thanks to, to the administration and, and in particular to Intersect Illinois, which has really been a great partner in this program and really helps deliver these projects to the region. 
And the reason I want to talk about foreign direct investment today is because, frankly, it's a big deal for us and a big part of our path forward. Um, you may not know, but Will County has two of the biggest and most important FDI projects in the state right now. Um, Jackson Generation, it, it, J Power is a Japanese company that chose to invest here in Will County. Um, their, their power plant currently under construction, uh, you know, more than a billion dollar investment in Will County. I asked for some labor updates for them this week in advance of this meeting. More than 1,100 people currently working on site building that project. More than 900 union craft labor positions working there right now, this morning. And more than 2.1 million total labor hours in, in the project to date. This has been an extraordinary project for Will County. And, and again, you've heard me mention this in the past. The praise for Will County's workforce coming out of this project uh, from the companies working it to build these nationally, best they've worked with. And this is so exciting for us. And again, FDI. And, you know, another huge foreign direct investment project that we have here that um, we, just, we can't be more excited about, uh, Lion Electric. Um, Lion Electric is a Canadian company uh, making their, their first major production investment in the United States here in Joliet and Will County. Um, I don't want to, to take too much of, of Nate's thunder away. We're, we're so happy that, that you were here and, and able to join us. And I, I'm going to you know, pivot to Nate to maybe talk a little bit more about his project and sort of what they're doing. 